How is it that almost every civilization across the world created dragons in some form or another if, as believed, dragons did not exist? With most mythological creatures, they are created in one specific region that spreads over time. However, dragons are an exception to this because they started all around the world in many different forms. So what is the possibility of dragons existing? And which of the many forms is the most likely to have existed? In my previous videos, could unicorns have existed? This commenter asked me to focus on the dragon in the Bible known as the Leviathan. So thank you for your comment. I plan to answer this question at the end of this video, so stay tuned for that. And if you have any questions, then feel free to let me know in the comments below and I'll answer them in future relevant videos or maybe even make a video about it. Before I answer the question, I wanted to go through dragons first so that I can get most of it covered already and then I'll answer the question specifically at the end. So, some dragons have been described to use magic for many purposes, including controlling the weather, causing drought, flooding or thunderstorms and even to fly if the dragon has no wings. However, in this video, I will not be addressing magic. To start with, it's important to understand the dragons in question here, and which are plausible according to evolution and ability. So, the different types of dragons I'll be looking at are hexapodal dragons, wyverns, hydras, cockatrices, and worms, also known as serpentine dragons. When it comes to evolution, we can start to eliminate some of the dragons straight away. You see, dragons are vertebrates, which means they have a backbone. And this evolutionary trait came from a creature called Tiktaalik, which decided it had enough of water and decided to try and live on land, crawling up on the land to go to other waters and eventually grew legs from that. And therefore, all other vertebrates have only four limbs. And yeah, it wasn't the most graceful of walkers, but it has plenty of time. So this means that hexapodal dragons could not have evolved. But are we seeing the exact truth here? Recently my wife showed me a lizard that seemed to have six limbs. Gliding lizards, or Draco sumatranus, which has four legs and two wings. Unfortunately though, these Draco's wings are very different in structure. They're not using a membrane, they're actually using skin folds to form their wings. And it's not an extra limb because the wings are actually their elongated ribs. So it still had four limbs, which means that dragons would still have to follow the four limb rule. Meaning that hexapodal dragons still don't fit this evolutionary rule. So I'm gonna carry on with dragons that do fit the description and dragons with no legs because just like snakes, they could have evolved to lose their limbs over time. Although sometimes snakes are born with an extra limb, though this is mostly a genetic mistake which is going to bring me on to hydras. Because especially with lizards, it is very possible to find these genetic mistakes or conjoin twins to cause lizards to have two heads. There is even a collector of these creatures and he has even acquired a two-headed goat. So a hydra isn't really a different breed of dragon. My guess would be that any breed of dragon could have a hydra form. So for this reason, I won't treat it as a separate type if any dragon could exist, then a hydra could also exist. So we covered dragons that simply cannot exist. However, we haven't ruled them all out yet, and the rest are a bit more tricky to figure out. So let's go through them. And my favourite type of dragon you all might be familiar with, you know, from Game of Thrones. These are wyverns. And I don't know why it annoys me, you know, when people call them weaverns. It's not we. It's why. Look, just listen. Wyvern. Sorry. Anyway, without two front legs, they have two rear legs and two wings for flight and to help them walk, fitting the potential evolution. And when it comes to flight, although these creatures are depicted to be very large in size, their wingspan and body size isn't actually too far-fetched, comparable to that of the condor. If instead you look at the aspect ratio and wing loading, condors soar rather than using powered flight and requiring an assisted takeoff. But you also have to remember that with wyverns, because they have bat-like wings and not feathered wings, this gives them the advantage of flexibility and making them more agile and creates a better lift. A wyvern's wings can also help them walk, using them just like an extra pair of legs. 
A great example of this is the giant pterosaur Quetzalcoatlus, the largest creature to have ever existed that could fly. Having a 12 meter wingspan and could travel 67 miles per hour and could stay in the air without landing for 7 to 10 days. When standing on the ground they were as tall as a giraffe and walked with the help of its wings, as did most pterosaurs. However, there may be more to this answer about flight when we talk about fire. But right now, I'd like to look at other possibilities before we move on. The cockatrice has something really easy to compare it to in the fossil data, which is the Yi Chi, a small dinosaur about the size of a crow, evolved from a group of dinosaurs called Scansoriopetrypogrids, and they evolved to fly like birds. However, unlike birds, they used a wing membrane, like pterosaurs, bats, or wyverns. However, it could only glide, not really fly, which is actually a very good representation of a cockatrice. Worms, or serpentine dragons, are mostly found in Eastern mythology, sometimes having legs, fins, or absent of both. Considering we focused a lot on limbs already, I will try to keep to the idea that these dragons are more like snakes. So, how would these snake-like dragons fly? Well, I guess dragons don't really have to fly. This is Chrysalopia, also known as the gliding snake. And yes, without wings of any form, they do glide. They do this by changing their body shape and their ribs open out to flatten their organs and body out and they move their body in a way that helps them to glide. If the Chrysalopia started hunting larger prey, it wouldn't seem unlikely that it would have to evolve traits like fins or maybe even the wings like we saw on the gliding lizard, because it would be getting bigger. And although Chrysalopia is a small snake, and when we think of the dragons we think of these big majestic creatures, well, with snakes, nothing beats the size of the Titanoboa, reaching up to 13 meters or 42.7 feet. Thankfully, they are extinct. So we've now discussed a bit of biology and some of the possibilities, but being one of their most distinctive traits, we have to consider whether they could breathe fire. It may seem impossible at first, but fire only really needs three things, and humans are only missing one. Those three things are oxygen, which is in the air around us, and ignition, like a spark, and a fuel. <laughs> yep. And if dragons evolved starting off as sea dragons, then like fish, they could have utilized a gas bladder to help them raise or sink in the water. If a dragon had this trait when they came to land, that gas bladder would have been useless. So it's not too much of a stretch to think that they could have adapted to use methane for two purposes. Breathing out only needing a spark to spew out fire, and as methane is about 50% less dense than air, the more methane they can store, the lighter they become, making flight easier than previously thought. And despite helium being the most famous gas to help things float, hydrogen would actually be the best option here. Hydrogen is about 7% the density of air, whereas helium is 14%. However, I couldn't find any animals naturally occurring that utilize these gases. Methane, on the other hand, is produced every time we fart. What about that spark that I mentioned earlier? I mean, it's the only thing we're missing to become firefighters. Well, there are a few options here, really. The first idea I had was their teeth could be made of a material that would spark when they close together, but I couldn't find any examples of unique teeth in the wild. So another idea is that if gases are expelled fast enough, they would cause static ignition. But I think the more likely idea here would be from natural rocks. Birds, lizards and even dinosaurs swallowed rocks to help with their digestion and buoyancy. These are called gastroliths, so maybe they could use certain types of rocks to create the needed spark. Best thing I found for this could be the piezoelectric crystal that sparks when squeezed which could be stored in the throat. Other than that, there is also the possibility of a liquid flame. The bombardier beetle has an amazingly devastating defense against predators, shooting boiling liquid from its butt. There's a surprising potential for butt jokes in this video. I'm kind of sorry. <laughs> anyway, 
It stores two chemicals which merge just as they eject towards the enemy, severely burning them. And dragons may have used a similar weapon burning enemies, giving the impression that dragon victims had been burnt. And the ancient people may have assumed these victims had actually been set on fire by these dragons. So do I think dragons existed? Well, not really. At least not in the way that our ancestors could have seen them and put them into our mythology. However, if there is one contender of dragons to be real, then unfortunately it's not my favourite wyverns, although they're kind of close, it's the cockatrice. Because of the fossil Yichi, which fits the cockatrice's description almost perfectly. However, there is definitely not a living or potential contender for the inspiration behind our dragons in mythology. And with the more common types of dragons like wyverns, I certainly don't think that they are an impossibility to become reality naturally or through gene manipulation. They would just need a series of very specific environmental triggers to set these creatures down the evolutionary line of dragons. But with that being said, where do the myths come from? Well, that isn't actually too hard to answer. Dragons are the embodiment of human fears. The natural predators of humans, large cats, large birds and snakes, and then they breathe fire because of the same fear. Fire could spread fast and devastate life as they knew it and barely had any means to counter it. So a dragon is thought to be a collection of all of our fears interpreted differently throughout different cultures. And with those fears, natural creatures have also been referred to as dragons. Like the Nile crocodile, standing taller, ancient people actually referred to him as a dragon. And then there is Snake Island, where the snakes hunt birds and had to adapt stronger venom so that the birds wouldn't fly away. This venom actually melts human skin as if it was really on fire. Another thought on fire was that in Northern Europe, there are gas vents in the mountains that if ignited by a miner's torch or even lightning, it would look like there were dragons breathing fire in the mountains. And the most likely with evidence to suggest that ancient people found dinosaur bones and mistakenly identified them as dragons. A Chinese scholar called Chen Qiu in 300 AD claimed to find dragon bones, but in fact they were Shonosaurus, a type of sauropod dinosaur. This may have happened all over the world and with different dinosaurs, these dinosaur bones could have made the different types of dragons that we see in mythology. So on my unicorn video I received a question relating to this video that I was already planning and if you have any questions go ahead and ask in the comments below and when I can I'll add it to a video and answer it there. So subscribe to see your answers get questioned and turn notifications on so that you don't miss them. So the question that Eagle Alodala asks was, okay, so I have a question. The Bible mentions a Leviathan, but its description is more like that of a sea dragon as it can spit fire. What's up with that? Are there any other accounts that align? We have something now that's classified as a Leviathan, so can they be the same? Are scientists even able to determine whether something can spew fire? What about sea dragons on old maps? Do they mean anything? Okay, that's a lot of questions. Right, okay, so I've got my books there. No, no, no I, don't, I don't see any dragons, I'm sorry. What about this one? It's the same map, I don't know why I'm trying it. Right, okay, let's go back. I've got to find some more maps. So that was my entire book collection. <laughs> I just had to show them off. So for the first part, I haven't actually spoken much about sea dragons in this. However, it would seem logical that sea dragons came first, and then when dragons moved to land for flight, especially when you're thinking about the gas bladder idea that I mentioned earlier. And from what I could find out, the Leviathan was actually described in many forms. A sea serpent, giant whale, crocodile, which makes it difficult to align it with any mythology from other cultures but I did find reference to it in the book of Joe. Not my book, must be a different Joe. And it was described as having smoky nostrils, breath that could set coals ablaze and flames from its mouth. But there wasn't actually much described physically. So that makes it hard to describe what it actually is. So it may not have been a dragon that we think of today, but the word dragon was used to warn people off from dangerous areas and from monsters. So the Leviathan could have been any creature, but still people referred to it as a dragon. 
which leads me on to the point of maps. So with old maps depicting dragons, unknown or dangerous lands and seas were marked with dragons purely as a sign to expect danger. Here be dragons was a sentence commonly spoken by cartographers to warn people away from certain areas. But words are not universal and potentially having a language barrier for the map holder, a depiction of a dragon is universal and everyone knows that it's dangerous. So a depiction of a dragon or a monster would be a universal way of warning. And the problem with spewing fire isn't actually whether it's possible, which I've already focused on, and it could be. The power of the dragon's fire breath is the problem itself. It would be difficult biologically for the dragons to not harm itself when breathing fire. Because at the very least, the fire would have to pass through his mouth. Because it could burn its tongue and the inside of its mouth at the very least. And any animal with an injured mouth has almost got a guaranteed death sentence. Because it's unable to hunt. And on that very happy note, <laughs> I'm going to end the video. So thank you for the comment. And thank you all for watching. And if anyone has any strange and weird questions they'd like me to look into. Or a topic they'd like me to discuss. Then let me know in the comments below. Remember to subscribe and... Have a great day. I'll see you next time.